Hey guys, so I'm gonna interrupt this video before the intro. I just decided on a series name and I'm so excited about it. You guys gave me so many great suggestions, so thank you so much. It definitely got the gears grinding. Someone said metamorphosis and that stuck with me and I loved it, but I knew that it wasn't it. I, for some reason, I just have feelings when I know like this is, this is it, this is what I want it to be. So I saw metamorphosis, I wrote it down, and then later throughout the day, I saw a picture of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly and instantly Evolve came to my mind. So if you clicked on this video, you know I've chosen Evolve. I want to explain what that means to me and we're going to start with the definition. So the definition of Evolve, to change or develop slowly, often into a better, more complex or more advanced state. The Latin Volvere has something to do with turning. To revolve is to turn in circles and travel on a circular path. That's not what I want. To evolve is to grow or develop out of something else, is to unroll from a source. What evolve means to me is I'm never gonna forget where I started. I'm always gonna hold that dear to my heart. I love the person that I've become. I am very proud of the person I've become. I'm not perfect. I fail on a daily basis, but I'm always giving it my all. I'm always striving so hard to improve. But at the same time, I know that there's so much more. There's so much more that I haven't even tapped into. In 2017, I am going to evolve into the best possible Emily that I have ever been. And what I love about the definition is it says, slowly. This generation is all about quick and they want things fast and they want immediate satisfaction and that's not how the real world works. It's not anything worth having doesn't happen like that. It never happens like that. So slowly I'm going to become the best version of myself. This prep series isn't just a bikini prep series. This is my life. This is my lifestyle. This is me sharing everything with you guys. Not just prep, but literally every aspect of my life. I'm going to grow and I'm going to evolve into the person that I was meant to be in 2017. I will be my best in hopes of me being me, inspiring you to be you. So come with me, evolve with me, grow with me, and let's slowly consistently do this together. Enjoy the video, guys. You're back! Thank you so much for coming. I'm always so happy when you guys click back on my channel and choose to watch my videos. So thank you for being here. This is going to be the first episode in my new bikini prep series, which I am so excited about. I hope you guys are excited too. This video was made basically because I want to help provide information and education to some people who may not be educated on bikini competing and everything that goes along with it. So you're either here because you're a current subscriber of mine, which case thank you or maybe a friend referred you to the video or maybe you commented something on one of my videos or my social media outlets and I knew that it came from a place of just being misinformed or not having education about the subject and I wanted you to just see some information and facts about it and then make your decision from there so I hope to shed a lot of light on some things I hope to explain a lot of things having to do with competing so you can have a better understanding of what it is what goes on behind the scenes etc so this video I'm gonna cover anywhere from 15 to 20 topics but I'm gonna separate it into two videos don't worry we're not gonna do all of that in one video so this will be part one part two will follow and I'll make sure to have part two linked in the description box below as soon as part two is live make sure you watch both parts if at any point you want to see which topic I cover and when just go ahead and click show more in the description box and you'll get to see everything that I'm talking about at what point in the video so if you do want to skip around no problem go ahead and do that and find the topic that you want to hear about without further ado Let's talk about topic number one. Bikini competing is an extreme. It is not the definition of fitness. It is not the next step in your fitness goal. It is literally only for those athletes that want to take their bodies to the next level. So let's pretend that we have a health and fitness little line, a spectrum here. And on one end, you have the unhealthy, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. Maybe they're overweight for their age and their height, and it's just making them not very healthy. In the middle, you have the good blood pressure, good cholesterol level. They're at a healthy weight for their height and their age and you know no health issues whatsoever And on the very other side of the spectrum you have the advanced athlete who decides to compete now in between the healthy and the competitor You have other kinds of athletes you have 
volleyball, basketball, track and field, all kinds of different sports and athletes, but those athletes and sports don't have to watch their nutrition and their diet as much as a bodybuilder would because the sport that we do is very much so based on aesthetics. So not only are we going through the physical training and mental training just like other competitors and athletes that are in other sports, but we're also having to 24 seven train ourselves to eat a certain way so that we can look a certain way for the stage. Now, with all of that said, my main goal for touching on this point is just to show you guys that it's not for everyone, it's not the next step in your journey, it doesn't make you better or worse if you choose to compete or not compete. It is at the very extreme side of things, and people who compete realize that the protocol for competing is for a very short amount of time, meaning when they're dieting down and they're doing more cardio, etc. That's not lifestyle type of dieting or living. That is literally for their sport, it is very extreme. It is not what I would suggest you ever do for any lifestyle type of goal. So I always say make sure that your protocol matches your goal. My goal specifically is to one day become Miss Bikini Olympia. So not only do I want to compete at the Olympia, which is like the Olympics of bodybuilding, but I want to be Miss Bikini Olympia one day. I want to be the best. So my protocol 24 seven is going to match that goal. If you're watching my videos, then I hope that you'll draw some inspiration and motivation. And when my program says you have to go to the gym six days a week, and I get to check off every sixth day and on the fifth day I'm struggling and I push through and I make it that sixth day anyways. I hope you'll take the inspiration to look at your program that might say you have to go to the gym three days a week and on that second day you're struggling but you push through and you get that third day and you get to check that third day off your list. That's a job freaking well done, like good job. So my goal here is I am sharing my journey, I'm sharing my experience and the things that I'm going through but that is all relative to my goal. My protocol matches my goal so make sure that you don't try and do someone else's protocol because in the end that doesn't match your goal so what I'm trying to reiterate with this point is when you're watching my bikini prep vlogs or any other competitors vlogs make sure that you never try and replicate what they're doing you can take inspiration from it you can take ideas from it if I'm doing cardio and I say I'm doing 20 seconds on and 40 seconds off for hit cardio take that, that idea and apply it to your one session of hit a week that you might have on your program take ideas from us but don't try and replicate what we're doing my program is very specific for me my body and my goals your program should also be specific for you and your goals. Number two, let's talk about the competition tan. The tan is very extreme. It is something that is required for every single competitor. So if you're gonna step on stage, you have to get that very dark tan. The reasoning for this is because the lights on the stage are very, very harsh and they wash you out. So regardless of what color you are, they're gonna wash you out. It's not gonna be as easy to see the muscle and the separation and everything that they're looking for. So everyone, regardless of what your current shade is, everyone will have to get a tan so that if anything, it's at least evening out your complexion. That way when the lights hit you, you're nice and bronzed and they can judge you fairly because everyone then has a fairly similar glow to their skin. I want to talk about why competitors compete. So this is just speaking from my own personal experience and if you're a competitor and you have reasons of why you compete, please put them down below so that other people can read them. I personally compete for way more reasons than just aesthetics, just how my body looks. I love the process of bikini prep. I love being pushed to the extreme, being tested mentally, physically, and overcoming it over and over again. I have had so much personal development and growth in every single prep, and I have no doubt whatsoever that throughout this next prep, I'm gonna have even more of that. I just, I love the grind of it all. I love having structure. I love, you know, having a routine that I have to follow. You know, and in my mind, once I sign up for something and I commit to it, I have to do it. So it gives me that accountability that I need. It gives me that structure and just that final feeling of finally stepping on stage. I always get this feeling and I'm getting chills just thinking about it. It's like all of those moments when you felt your weakest, when you mentally felt like you just couldn't do it anymore and you chose to be strong and you chose to push through it and accomplished more than you thought you could have. I feel all of those moments when I'm standing on stage and I get to eloquently present myself and present all of the hard work that I've done. It's just the most incredible feeling ever. And to know that along the way I've inspired other people to be their best self. And it's people that don't even compete. People that say, you've inspired me to work harder at my job, at what I do. And I just earned a promotion because of all the work I've been putting in and all the countless hours and 
you know, I've been doing better in my family life by having to balance it better because I watch you and how hard it is for you to balance things, but you find a way to do it anyways. I've done that in my own life. So there's so many other reasons besides aesthetics that I do this. If I didn't love the process of it all, I absolutely would not prep. My prep right now, currently, I am starting in the end of December. It'll go through May and it's not gonna stop there. Those are just my first shows. So that's a very long time to be doing something if you don't absolutely love it. So I'm glad that I love it. I understand it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be quite the struggle. There's gonna be a lot of ups and downs throughout the whole thing, but I've proven to myself over and over, all I have to do is give my 100% in that moment and never give up. So follow along the journey guys and I hope to inspire you to be the best you that you can be. I wanna address two myths that I hear in the bikini world all the time that are absolutely not true. The first one is bikini girls starve themselves and damage their bodies forever. I understand this just comes from a place of being misinformed and uneducated about the subject matter. This is a very individualized sport. Now, have there been coaches out there that give awful protocol for their goals and have helped aid in damaging girls' bodies? Absolutely, and that's horrible, and I hope that that trend dies down. I feel like people are getting smarter and more educated, and they're not listening to the coaches that are putting them on dangerously low calories. Now back to what I was saying about it being individualized, for example, you have one of my friends who, she eats 250 grams of carbs during peak week and her fats are still at a great amount and her, her protein is still at a good amount. She's eating more food than the general public eats in a day and she's leaner than ever. Her body is just an absolute machine and I'm slightly, just a little like salty and jealous. I wish I could eat that much food, but that shows you that my body is completely different. I could not eat 250 grams of carbs during peak week and be lean and as shredded as I do get for my shows. My body requires my carbs to go much lower and my body responds differently every single time. So it's really just learning your own body and seeing where you you need to take your body in order to achieve those levels of leanness. Now, I will say at the very end of prep, my carbs do go lower than I would like. They go a lot lower and it's just something that is required for competition prep and it's something that is very short at the last few weeks of prep. So it's not elongated, it's not something that can cause damage in the long term. You can only cause metabolic damage if you've been doing this for a long time and if you never let your body recover. So I'm not creating any sort of long-term damage with the dieting that I am doing. I am very monitored and controlled by my coach who knows exactly what he's doing. There's a reason why I normally don't share my last two to four weeks of prep macros if I share my macros at all and generally it's just because I never want someone to come and watch one of my videos never having seen me before never having watched a video like this being uneducated and then thinking that they should just go replicate that I don't want to promote that uh, that's one reason why I'm making this video but also why I won't share my macros because I only do it for a very short amount of time just to get that quick peak of conditioning and then I'm back to putting a little bit more body fat on after my shows so no bikini girls do not damage their bodies. The second myth I wanna address is the statement, all bikini competitors binge. This is something that bothers me quite a bit because in a world where we're saying be yourself, be individualized, everything is individualized per person, we're now grouping this, this group of athletes together saying, oh, you're all the same. Everyone has individualized struggles. Everyone deals with something, everyone struggles with something, but they don't all deal or struggle with the same thing. I personally don't have problems with binging, I never have. I have quite a few close friends that have struggled with binging and I've seen it firsthand and how absolutely awful it can be. And I encourage those people to reach out for professional help. I'm not gonna apologize for not having that struggle. I have plenty of other struggles. I have plenty of things that I deal with, but that is not one of them. And that's a myth that I wanted to really kind of harp on because if you have any sort of disordered eating habits, I personally, and this is just my opinion, I personally think this is not the sport for you. I don't think it's a smart move. I've seen people who feel like they have total control and they've come out of it, and then they go into bikini prep and everything's going great, and then at the end, those disordered eating habits start happening again. And I haven't seen many people that have been able to go through it and not turn back to those. And it's nothing that's wrong with them whatsoever, but I think you need to know yourself and be true to yourself. And I don't think you should do something just because a lot of people that you know are doing it. Remember, bikini prep is not the next step in your fitness journey. You can be an amazing fitness person, all into health, fitness, being active, without ever stepping foot on stage. So just remember, find your own path. Don't try to follow anyone else's path. This is a light one, a fun one, easy one. Someone asked, 
what is my favorite part about competing and I kind of already touched on it but my favorite part about competing is just the process of it all I love the personal growth and development that comes out of the process of prep and then of course I can't even explain the feeling that I get when I'm on stage after all of the hard work has been done and it comes to that moment and I I get that I get those chills I get it every single time I'm on stage and I just I cannot wait for that again but lots of hard moments to go through before we get there again <laughs> That is gonna conclude part one of this video. I will be posting part two very shortly, so bear with me. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned anything, comment below. Give me some feedback if maybe you're a competitor and you enjoyed this or you agreed with what I said. Feel free to elaborate. I could literally go on for hours and hours and hours about this, but I had to cut it down, guys, just to kind of get the basic information out there. So if you're someone who wanted to touch more on what I said, feel free. I'm all open for that. I love you guys, and I'll see you in part two.